Hi, welcome back everybody. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to uh, continue weathering uh, the Sherman tank here. Um, and we're going to use the, uh, the same suite of uh, products that we've been uh, going with uh, all along. The, uh, the same three uh, pigments that we use, the light dust, the dark earth, and the, uh, uh, the earth. earth. Uh, we're going to use the same suite of uh, AK uh, weathering products. Uh, the damp earth, the fresh mud, the dark mud, and the earth effects. Uh, we're also going to throw in some uh, engine oil. Uh, we're going to continue to use the heavy earth, which is the uh, thick uh, mud paste that we've been using uh, to kind of set the base uh, for, the, uh, for the pigments and the weathering. Um, and then we're also going to uh, add in a few new things. Um, we're going to use these um, splashes, uh, medium density mud splashes. So we're going to use uh, dry step. We're going to use as the light color, we're going to use turned earth as the mid-level and we're going to use wet ground uh, as the darker color. And again, uh, you know, as you remember from previous videos, I like to work uh, in, in threes. Uh, and then we're also going to introduce um, some more new things here. So these are some wilder products. Uh, we're going to use old grease uh, for simulating stains, um, axle leaks, that type of thing. Uh, we're going to use murky water to simulate uh, wet effects. So this is kind of like a glossy product. It's really, uh, uh, it's a really nice thing. It stinks, but it's, uh, it does a great job. And we're going to use uh, diesel effects again for some uh, for some uh, fuel leaks and, and staining and whatnot. Um, I've also we're also going to start uh, getting back into oils. Um, we're going to use. I've got a range here of. Uh, uh, of some colors from the uh, Adam Wilder's uh, oils and the 502 Optolung uh, colors as well. So these are all kind of earth tones, buff, dark mud, light mud, uh, engine grease. That's a great color to use. Um, wide application of things you can do with it. And then from uh, from Wilder's uh, range, we're going to use dark mud and uh, light dust. Uh, we're also going to use uh, this is uh, a color from the uh, from the Mig uh, oil brushers. Uh, this is Starship Bay Sludge, kind of, a, kind of an odd name, but a really, really nice dirty color. So we'll, we'll work that in as well. So we'll get uh, or we'll get everything set up. We have our usual assortment of paintbrushes. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, oops, makeup sponges here that we're going to use um, to kind of move things around or remove effects from the vehicle. Uh, just a piece of cardboard for the oil paints, just to get rid of some of the linseed oil. Uh, a small square of uh, scotch Bright uh, scratch pad. Uh, we'll use this again for manipulating some of the, the pigments and the effects. Uh, and then uh, some orderless thinners. Uh, and then, of course, to fix the pigments, we'll, we'll, go, we'll continue using the, uh, the, X, the Tamiya X28 and the small applicator ball here. So I'll get everything set up and uh, we'll get right to it. Thanks. Okay, so since the, uh, since the last episode, uh, I've done a little bit more work on the Sherman here, um, and I'll, I'll kind of go through what I've done. And the goal is uh, everything that I've done, I'm going to replicate on the other side that I haven't done. So let's start with the front here. So here, um, I've added a stain. Um, and I think, uh, I always like to add a bit of a point of interest on the front of a vehicle. Um, quite often, you'll see that there's some type of uh, stain, and this could be um, mud that's still drying, it could be water, uh, it could be um, oil or grease, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure how that would get on there, but, um, but it, it does add a bit of a visual interest here. So I'll show you how to replicate that and we'll carry that through. I've also done a stain here on the side. So just to replicate, just to give it a, a little area of interest, just something else to look at on the side of the tank here in terms of uh, a point of interest, as it were. Um, I've also gone in and done some uh, grease stains on some of the uh, road wheels, and uh, just to you know, just to uh, simulate, uh, I guess, a blown gasket of, uh, of some kind. But again, to give it a little bit more uh, more interest. The same thing on this this rear uh, either wheel. I've completed the back. I haven't done this side, but I've done this side here, and this is where we're going to get into uh, splashes. So I'll show you how to apply splashes to add some some random effects uh, to your vehicle. I've completed the uh, the underside of the tank as well and this is a great um, this is a great uh, palette or test bed to, to use because people typically don't see it and it's very easy to cover up if you have something that, that uh, you're not completely happy with but it is important to pay attention to so if you're weathering everything else but you don't weather you leave this blank even though it's not something that people are gonna necessarily notice um, 
you know, if you're entering in a, in a competition, uh, again, it's something that, you know, could, could cost you points if, uh, if that's something that's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're looking to compete. Um, on the front here, again, there's some more splashes. Uh, we talked the last time about working the, the application of the weathering the mud up on the vehicle, because again, you want to make sure that if you're, if you have a lot of weathering on the sides, that you, you want to be consistent and you want to have some around the top of the vehicle here as well. So I'll show you how to, I've done this side here, just to put, you know, mostly using pigments, but this is where oil paints can come in and some of the, um, uh, some of the mud effects, the, the thicker enamels where you can put them on and just kind of move them around with a, with a, with a brush uh, moistened with, uh, with thinner. And then we'll get onto the top of the vehicle as well and I'll show you how to apply that and we'll kind of work. And, very, uh, very easy to do, and the nice thing about at this stage of the, of the game is that um, it's hard to make a mistake. If you apply something and you're not happy with it, very easy to remove, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. So that's, um, so that's that. We'll, we've also done some weathering along the side here, some splashes here and here. Uh, and then this side of the vehicle, I took the liberty of applying the mud, so just to give it a little bit of a texture, just to give it a bit of a base. Um, so this has had a chance to dry, and now we're just going to start applying some, some pigments and other effects over that. So we'll get right to that. Okay, so let's start, uh, let's start on the side here. So I've got my trusty pigment mix. Again, this is the same mix I had last time. And I'm just going to pick up some with a brush. And you're just going to start to just apply it over, just like we did in other, in other episodes, just apply it over the mud. Kind of here where you would get a little bit of from the tracks moving. Very kind of random thing. And a little bit more on the back here. My reasoning for that is just because as the tracks work their way around, you're gonna kick up more mud on the rear of the vehicle as you're going forward. So just apply. And again, I've got I've got the uh, the decal, decal. You say, you say deco, I see decal. Um, here, uh, again, don't be afraid to cover it up. Uh, weathering is, is not discriminating in that way. And there's something, you know, it, it, there's something nice about covering up the deco, decal on a model. I'll call it a decal, let's go with decal for now because the effect is random. Now you can do a couple of things here. You can either, you can either fix it with the X20 um, or you can just kind of brush the loose bits off and see what that gives you. So again, you're just kind of working up or down motion and you get a little bit of a streaking effect too. Right, just to move the pigment around so you don't have blotches of pigment. You just like with a nice stippling motion like so. I'll work that into the front after and then here. Here we may want to fix this a bit because it's a little thicker application. But here you don't really have to. You see like it doesn't like if, you, if you're not going to be manipulating your model, which I guess most of us wouldn't be, um, there's no harm whatsoever. i just put this down pull this off. There's no harm whatsoever in uh, in not fixing things. Uh, and you certainly don't want to put a, um, a matte coat over it because as soon as you start to spray something on top of this, it's going to reduce the effect of the pigments. So I'm just going to fix, oh, that's too much of a drop there, fix just back here. Just uh, All I do is just put a drop, just let capillary action pull it across. And just touch it. You'll need a lot here. And maybe in the front I'll fix it. Just by again, the nice thing about this thing is you're just you're just applying a few drops. I've been for all the for all of the videos we've been doing, I've, I've I've used a fraction of what you see in here. All right, so just getting this nice little applicator here just allows you to use it a little bit more efficiently. And then we'll let that dry. And then see how I didn't apply any fixer here. I'll just leave that the way it is. I'm pretty happy with the look there. And then you can kind of you know, move it up, move it down, just to get work in that streaking effect again in the same um, direction that the rain would fall. We talked about that in previous sessions. 
And it looks pretty good. Again, as simple as that, it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. And if you if you want, well, I guess you could you could start to manipulate this too. Just just with a stippling motion, just to get everything moved around. All right, and then maybe in the front here too. Just to get that going, and then maybe a little bit of like so. So we'll let that dry. We'll do the same. So while that's drying, we'll do the same thing. So again, a little bit more mud here. Oh, I, one thing I did mention: I have painted the tools on here, and all I did was uh, what I like to do for the tools is I'll paint them in a in a dark color, like a dark brown, uh, or or even a dark gray, um, and then I'll go over the wooden handles with um, with Vallejo paint. Uh, I think I use the old wood, new wood. New wood being a little bit uh, darker, the old wood being a little bit more faint. It's all varied up on the tools here. You can see here I used the darker color. On the axe I used the lighter color. Went back to the darker color here, lighter color here. Just mix it up. And then what I do is I take a little dab of oil paint and I'll put the oil paint in the corner here. So I'll put a little oil paint there, a little oil paint here against this bracket. Same thing here, same thing here. And then with a slightly moistened brush, with the oilless thinners, I'll just kind of work it in. And you can see it gives a nice uh, kind of wood grain effect. Very simple to do, very easy. Uh, I picked up that tip from an old uh, Marcus Nichols video that he did, uh, and I've been using it ever since. And I think it just gives a really nice effect on tools. So anyway, so paint your, paint your tools before you do any of this because they would be on the vehicle subject to the weathering as well. You don't want to do your weathering and then paint the tools after. It just doesn't look right, so you want to incorporate them in. So getting back to the mud. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. Again, with your favorite old and crappy brush, just apply, just dab the pigments on here. And again, getting them on the uh, sledgehammer here. Almost breaks my heart to cover up that nice wood grain, but that's what you got to do. And again, I would probably take the time to fix this because there's a little bit more pigment on here. So we'll just add a couple of drops of X20A here, up here, and we'll let that let that do its thing and dry. So while we're waiting for that to dry. Let's go back to the front of the vehicle. Now, um, you'll see what I did here is I put in some, uh, and again, all the while using pigments. Uh, what I've done is I've worked in some pigments here around the hatches uh, down here. I've had some accumulation against this, uh, I guess the front part of the uh, transmission cover here, because that's a natural area ledge where, uh, where, where dirt would accumulate, dirt and mud would accumulate. Um, I haven't, you'll notice that I haven't really done the hatch here. And the reason, my reasoning for that is that um, a lot of this would be done by crew members um, getting up and off of the vehicle. And typically, if they're doing that, the hatches would be open. So I would do a little bit less on the hatches. And again, it creates a bit of an area of interest here. There's a bit of a, a differentiation between the hatch here and, and the area surrounding it. Um, and then I just work with odorless thinners to move the pigments around. So at this point, the pigments are kind of like oil paints. Where you're just kind of moving them around, and you can you can take them away, uh, uh, take as much as away as you want, uh, and then you can go over it with uh, with a sponge later, just to, in a kind of a sweeping motion, just to kind of work it out. Because again, the oilless thinner doesn't really fix them, um, so you have some room to, to manipulate and remove, and you can pull off. Let's use a clean side here. And you can see in here in particular. So you see here, this is all. This is I just pulled this off here. So you can still move it around, and at this point, I wouldn't bother fixing it because, it, you know, it's in the crevices and whatnot. You're not going to be getting any fingerprints or, or touching it in there. So let's uh, again the same with the same old brush. Just slightly get your pigments in there. So I'll do the same type of thing here, where I'll kind of stay. I won't weather the top of the hatch too too much. But I'll weather around it. We'll get it in the crevices here, right down here. 
in here, and you're just kind of working it in. What you're really trying to do is just, you can see how the pigment here is a little bit clumpy. So when I put it on the model, it's still a little bit clumpy. You can see here, for example, you've got large pieces. And what you're really trying to do is just trying to break those up. Let's unload the brush here. Kind of almost smoosh those in. So we'll say this side looks a little bit more. And then using a, a small pointed brush. So this is just uh, a little bit thinner I have in my palette. Here, so let's say I want, let's say if I want to remove some from the top of the hatch here. I just kind of manipulate, again, it's just like working with oils. Manipulate it, move it around, clean it off. And then here, just with a stippling motion, just to get some thinner on there. So the whole purpose of this is just to give a medium for, for you to be able to move the pigments around in a more controlled fashion. Again, you're not fixing them. You're just moving them around. Right, just with a barely, barely wet brush. You see how I'm just, just touching them, stippling. You're not, you're not wiping things around, you're just stippling. Stippling, I think, is the key here. Stippling is the key to life. Well, I don't know if it's the key to life, but... I'm gonna go up here, we'll add some more. So here, so here I can start, as you can see, I can start to move the, the pigments around a little bit better, a little bit more to control. So I can, let's say if I wanna work them in closer to the, the lip of the hatch here. Like that. Now. Don't forget, because you've wet the pigments, everything darkens right up, but when they dry, they'll come back to their original color. And let's go and attack here. this off. And in here I've got some, so I can just kind of streak this stuff down just to give a bit of, similar to what was done here, just to give it a bit of a streaking effect. Again, it always in, the, the, the key rule here, the rule of thumb is just in the direction of rain. So as rain hits the vehicle, it'll kind of streak down, just follow gravity. There you go. And there you have it. Not much more. Not much more to it than that. And here I'll just right, move it around. Just again, just barely moist. So what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll put the hair dryer to this and the X20 that we put to fix the pigments around the side. And uh, we'll be right so we've uh, we've hit the uh, vehicle with the hair dryer. You can see this is all dried up. It's lightened up considerably, so it's back to the original color of the pigment. Um, now you could leave it like this if you're happy with the effect. Um, doesn't look too bad. But what I might do is maybe just try and blend it in a bit with uh, with a makeup sponge. So these are uh, these are these are great tools for uh, blending and, and moving pigments around or, or oils or washes or, or whatnot. Um, I, use them, I use them on uh, aircraft models too. When I put uh, panel line uh, washes in, uh, I can take anything that gets out of the panel line off of these things, streak them back, really nice effect. Uh, so very uh, wide application for, uh, for weathering. Um, you can get these at the drugstore, dollar store. I just steal them from my wife. Sorry, Carolyn. Um, 
but uh, yeah, they're great. They're a great little tool, and they're uh, very much disposable. So what I'll do, so here again, uh, just to kind of move some of the pigments on around, just kind of brush them off. So because again, remember we haven't fixed these. We've only used odorless thinner, which won't fix your your pigments. So you can still all all it does is it really adds a medium for you to move them around. So I can just brush them off, and you can see how. In here already, just by doing this, I've been able to remove some of the effect. Soften it a bit, as it were. Right? Down here, on the sides here. And there's just a very, you know, just a very... Just to soften up a bit. sneeze there. So you can see now I've pulled off a lot of the pigments. So again, going back to my earlier comment, if you put too much on there, you're not happy with it, until you fix it, you have all kinds of opportunity to, to correct it and get it to a point where you're happy. So I think that looks pretty good. Now, let's say, for sake of argument, let's say I'm not happy with, uh, let's say, this portion here. Let's say I'm not happy the way I have the pigment in there. Well, you know what? You can just remove it with the odorless. Just pull it out. That's the great thing about this, is that until you fix it, and, and to be fair, after doing this, I wouldn't even bother fixing it. Because the less product you put on your vehicle, um, the less chance you're going to have of getting a watermark or a stain or something where you don't want it. Um, I'm just working some streaks there. So you can see I've probably, now we'll dry this up, but I've probably, in doing that, I've pulled out a lot of the pigment. Now let's say I want to, you know, again, clean the hatch with the same type of reasoning that we had on this other one here, where the hatches would be open and the crew really wouldn't be walking on them per se, or walking on them less. And you can see it's all, and because you're using so, because you're just using a, just a barely moist brush to do it, this will evaporate and dry in no time. You see, so let's just hit that with the hair dryer real quick. So I've just uh, hit this with a hair dryer just for literally a few seconds, and you can see that most of the all of the pigment in here is gone. We've taken off most of the pigment from here, but just left a little bit on there, which is which gives a nice effect. And um, again, just to show you that if you have too much on there, you can you can easily pull it off. So very very simple to go back and correct things that you're not 100% happy with. Um, and then you can go back and you can you can do it all over again. So let's do let's add a little bit more pigment. Uh, let's go down here. So I'm gonna add some here, I'm gonna add some up here, and maybe get some more streaking in there. And again, it's a very, uh, for me it's a very random process. Um, where I think the best results that I've had, and maybe this doesn't work for everybody, but the best results that I've had is that like I really don't, I mean you have an idea of what you wanna do, um, but you just start doing it and you play around with it because it's so forgiving. Uh, you play around with it until you get it to a point where you're happy and then maybe you walk away from the model for a little bit and you come back to it later to give it, you know, to look at it with a fresh set of eyes and you're good to go. So again, let's break this up here. Get some more accumulation in there. It's a nice, nice area where you've got a good, good bit of mud. Uh, and then you can come back, same thing. Hit things with the with the odorless thinners, and using using a small brush like this is ideal. You don't want to hit it with a large brush like this because it's, you just there's no doesn't allow for really any precision. And you can just start moving things around with it.
So I might want to just maybe just clean up in here a bit. Just to get that nice demarcation between the hatch and the hull, similar to what we have here. And maybe get some pigments down or some. And there's a lot here. So because there's a lot here at the end, this is somewhere where we might actually want to apply the fixer. It just allows you to, again, all the odorless thinner does is just gives you a medium to move the pigments around. Very easy to do. And you can just kind of do some nice, and the nice thing about it, you know, I mean, you look at each individual panel. And you see here, there's a real nice opportunity to use a little bit of streaking. So we'll just do that. Okay. I think we're good. Okay. So we'll let uh, we'll let this dry. Maybe just do a little bit of streaking here. Very subtle. Okay, so I've just hit uh, the second application here with the hair dryer, and we'll do the same thing with the sponge. We'll just kind of soften everything just by moving stuff around. Like so. And in here, just move it down like that, just. So I think that looks pretty good. So what I might want to do, so actually I just got a bit of a spontaneous idea here. So you see, there's a bit of accumulation of, of uh, dirt and mud here. Uh, what I may want to do is I may want to add just a bit of color here just to show that maybe this is still wet or there's a little bit more of an accumulation so it might be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to take one of my, Let's see, what do we want to try here? We can do fresh mud, dark, let's do dark mud. So again, this is just one of the AK uh, earth effects. These are thick enamels, but they're good at adding a little bit of interest. And for this, you're not gonna need a lot. So I'll use the same, same brush, fine brush, just get a little bit on there. You don't need a ton and just touch Just touch in there like so. Just a little bit. Like that, just to give it a bit of a different. Now this goes on, this looks pretty stark, but once it has a chance to dry and absorb into the pigments, it'll lighten up a fair bit. But just to give it just a bit of interest here, just in the where all of this dirt and mud would accumulate. Just paint that in there like that. There, that's all you need. Clean that up. Okay. So now, um, why don't we do some splashes? So, on uh, if you remember, so I, I kind of did some pre-work on this side. So here, you'll see that there's a little evidence of a little different color splashes, some light dots, some darker ones. And the thing I like about splashes is it really adds a, an element of randomness uh, to them all. So as, again, as the vehicle's moving, it uh, drives into mud, it would, mud would kick up and splash up. So I've done some along here. Uh, I haven't done anything on this side, so we'll, we'll attack this side. And then the same thing on the rear. And I think this, this here shows it's a really good effect. And again, I, I would put maybe a little bit more here because as the vehicle moves forward, treads are coming back and it's kicking up. Uh, all of this mud. If you see some videos on YouTube of real tanks moving around in a, in a muddy field, um, you don't want to be back here. You don't want to be behind them because you will get coated. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll, we'll do some mud splashes uh, and maybe a little bit on the sides uh, here as well and, and on the front. So let's get that ready. So the, the products I use here 
And again, I like to work in, in three, so I'll use the, uh, these are the big ones, splashes. So these are slightly thicker, again, thicker enamels with a little bit of texture to them. Uh, and I've got the wet ground, the turned dirt, and the dry step. So they're just darker, mid-tone, lighter color. Um, so let's maybe start with the turned dirt. So we'll shake that up. Now these things are pretty thick. So there's a couple of different ways you can apply them. Um, what I like to do is uh, get uh, a brush, uh, kind of a, a, a th an old thin pointy brush, and I'll, let's say maybe set this up here where. so that we can do this in a that's good, I think. And then I'll get some product on the brush. So you want to leave it wet, so you can see there's a fair bit on here. And then using, uh, this is like a cocktail stick we got. I, got, I think Dave got this at a, at a dollar store, but you can use a toothpick, or you can use, um, you can use your trusty uh, paint stirrer. Um, but I just find this a little bit easier to work with. And then what I'll do is I'll test this first. All right, so I'll test this by flicking it on. And you can see, right? You can get, depending on the... So it's a little bit messy, it's a little bit random, but that's the nice thing about it, is that it, it is that random. You could use a, some people use an airbrush, and, and we'll load this up and, and blast air through this to get, I, that's a little bit too random for me. Um, I've tried doing that with somewhat disastrous results. So I find this gives you the most control. So let's load this up. All right, we'll just give it a bit of a test here. And then we'll go right to the model. Um, and if you want to, let's say, if I, if I don't want to get mud here, I'll just use this scratch pad here and just put that in there just to protect it. And we'll start flicking mud. So you can see there's some splashes up here. So it may be hard for the camera to pick this up, but there is mud going on there. Okay, so it gives a good random effect. Now let's go to a light, let's go to the lighter color. So now I've used, I've gone to the lighter color, the, the dry step, uh, loaded the paintbrush up, just do a little bit of test, testing here, yeah, it looks good, and then, so there, that, that shows up a little bit better, I think, you can see, and we'll get some down here too, and just gives a nice random, you can see from the, just a nice random pattern of splash, I just think that that adds just a little something. There you go, that's nice. So you see we've pretty much obliterated the decals on the back here, but, or decals, decals, decals. Uh, and, we, and we're definitely getting it on the tool here. Um, it's, it's a nice effect, so I think we're good there. And for consistency, we can add some of the darker color. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, I don't think. You may want to work darkest to lightest, but I don't think it's that critical. Clean that up. And then we'll go with the wet ground. Now these are all enamel based, so if you want to clean things up, and I'll show that later, um, no problem doing that whatsoever. So we'll go here and flick that. So we'll do some flicking. With a little bit more, just for whatever reason, this one's a little bit thicker. There we go. And I'll just give it a few down here. And you can use, I mean, if you want to, 
Like if I was smarter, I probably would have covered the top of the vehicle here because you wouldn't have splashes up here and I've gotten some here, but I'll show you how to remove them. There you go. Oh, that's a bit much. It's a little bit heavy. Okay. So we've gotten our three. You see, it's as easy as that. Um, so before we go to the front or do other areas, I will show you how to go in and clean or remove effects that you're not happy with or are somewhere where they shouldn't be. So again, the nice thing about these is they are all enamel based. Pull that out, I've done your job. So I've gotten some splashes up here on the vehicle. Now, um, I might, I'm not, uh, Normally, I don't know that I would spend a lot of time worrying about these because you would get the odd splash here and there, but let's say we wanted to remove this. There, remove. As easy as that, All right? Let's say, well, I want to get rid of these. Removed. All right? Easy peasy. Now here, there was a little bit that got, it was a little bit clumsy with some of it. So I might, so here there's a big, well, let's start, so here there's a big clump, then, so let's say if I want to remove that. Just, again, you can, it becomes like an oil paint, where you can move things around with a moist, with a brush moistened in odorless thinners. Let me just remove some of the effects. It's as easy as that. So if you screw something up or you get it somewhere it shouldn't be, that's all you need to do to get rid of it. Very simple. Now let's say there's a big blob here. So let's just get after that. Let's just. Figure out how we can just maybe streak it down, right? Just kind of work it in a bit. Got not the end of the world. But you can see how it gives a nice random effect, which I really like. So let's say if you wanted to, now if you, you can let that dry and that'll lighten up a bit, but let's say you wanted to go after it with some, you wanted to lighten it up, well you can go back to your pigments. So I can just dabble some pigments on here, kind of a random way, just to, and pick up a little bit more pigment. So again, you go back and forth between using the various mediums here. Very easy to do. Very easy to do. Okay, so let's do the front. So again, same principle, or maybe we'll do a little bit on the side here. So same principle. Let's do that. Like so. Now here, what I might do is I might just put a sponge on the top here to avoid the same problem I created before. If I can get this to sit properly without falling off. Oh, it's not doing a very good job. This is where a third hand would come in. Or maybe a piece of tape, or maybe actually let me use this. There we go. It's not gonna work. Maybe a scrap piece of There we go. Robert found me a nice piece of tape to use here, and that was probably the thing we should have done from the beginning. So um, we'll start with the dark. We'll get we'll load that up. 
on the brush here. I'll test it out. Always test. And just apply some. It's a very subtle effect. Get some more product on this. So we'll now we'll move to the mid color. And just flick that on there, just there you go. Just just a little bit, just to give it a little something, something. And if it gets on other parts, of it, that's fine, because this is all muddy anyways. Very good. Down, and then we'll go to the lighter color, which is the dry step. It's actually quickly turning into my favorite here, because this does show up nicely on the green. But again, it's all, it's all about layering your effects. And that's the secret, getting a good layer of effects in there. There you go, that you start to see pop up. Let's unload that a little bit more. There you go. And you don't need a lot, just a bit, just a hint. There you go. Pull that up. And you can see nice effect of the, again, you know, if you combine what we did with the pigments and, and build, starting with the, the mud, building that up, adding the pigments to it, and then uh, doing this, flicking this on there, nice random effect. I think that looks pretty good. And you see you've got some in the way, maybe you just pull that off with your, use the old, the old Mark One thumb to clean off the wheel here. But you know what? I've gotten some on here. I'm going to leave that. I think that's a nice, it's a happy accident. Leaving that on there like that. So let's do the same thing on the front. So let's, uh, and again, I, I, you could go darkest to lightest, but let's, uh, I, I don't think there's much need to follow. So let's see, we've got the brush loaded with the dry step. Let's start with that. There you go, oh, that's good. Oops, that's, we got a little bit more than we wanted to there. But that's okay, we can fix that. That's not an issue. And so you can see the effect starting to build up very slowly. Like so. There you go. Now let's go to the mid range. Turn, turn dirt. And I think there's about seven or eight different tones you can get. You could use, uh, again, you could use enamels. The nice thing about these, though, is that they are thickened for you, so they do have the right consistency right out of the bottle. So there's no fuss or muss. Do the same thing here with this. Right, just add just a little bit. You can see it slowly building up the effect. So. Okay, that's all we need. A little bit here, side. And then unload that and go to your darker color. See, I didn't bother cleaning off the brush, really. And same type of thing, just very. Nice little effect. There we go. Like that. I think we're done. So the only thing we have to do is maybe I'll clean up that blob there. And uh, I think we're done with the uh, with the splashing. So let's get back to this brush here. We'll get some clean 
odorless thinner on it. And then we can just start. And I think the best way to clean it, again, is just like use a stippling motion. So what I'm doing is you see I'm just pushing it down towards the, the area where all the other dirt and mud that the effects we put on is accumulating. You can see that uh, in the time that we've been doing the splashing, you know, that this area has dark, and just ever so slightly, again, I said it would lighten up, and it certainly did, um, where you'd have a slightly darker tone in there where we put in the, uh, the dark mud. And maybe we'll go back and give that another coat, but let's just fix this first. It's very easy to do. Maybe fix, oh, it looks a little bit clumsy there too, so let's just fix that. And a stippling motion is best. Because you've got all these other um, splashes around it that I don't want to mess up. So, let's blend that down. So you see how easy, it is? so even if it gets somewhere where you don't want it, very easy to fix. It's not a problem. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay. Okay, so we'll let that dry, and I think the next thing we'll look at is we'll talk about doing some staining, as we did here. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, incorporating staining. Um, and so you can see here on the front part of the transmission cover here, I've already added a stain uh, roughly from, from this area and just kind of bled it across here. And I always think that these things always add, a, again, another area of interest on the, on the vehicle. Um, so what we're going to do is I've created a mixture, and what I've used is I've used some odorless thinner. I've used some of this uh, Adam Wilder uh, murky water. And the reason I've, I've used that is to give it, um, this, is a, this is meant to simulate uh, uh, damp, uh, wet stains. And it's a, so it's a, it's 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 a nice thick liquid, and it's very glossy, um, so it'll uh, help create the effect that we're looking for. And for color, I've used uh, old grease. Okay, so you can see here, it's a very thin mixture, and the whole purpose of this is to build this up in layers. So. What you can do here is you can just, in a, in a, again, a stippling, stippling motion is the key here. Just add, just kind of work your way toward like, the center of the stain, just to add more concentration of color, and maybe just a bit of a gloss effect. Right? You just see, I just carry it across the front here. like so and maybe carrying it down here very random so again just creates a nice effect along the front of the vehicle okay so I think that looks pretty good now that'll that'll soften so it looks pretty, looks pretty dark and glossy now, but as it dries, that'll soften it for a bit. And we see we did one stain here on the side, so I'm just gonna hit the middle of that and work my way down. Just so that you're building up. Because again, with all the dirt and the mud, if something leaked here, um, or there was water of some kind, it would kind of draw out and be a little bit more concentrated in the center. So let's do something on the other side of the tank that we haven't done. So maybe let's create a bit of a, just a, a trickle here, I'll show you how to start this. So again, just in a bit of a stippling motion. Get that so the light can hit it better. 
is just, just dab it down. So you see I'm just creating just a general path of the stain. And the secret here is to build it up in layers. So I might let that dry, and then we'll come back to it. But you can see from the vehicle standpoint, it's just another area of interest, just something else for, for, for somebody to look at. Now you see we corrected this area here, it's still a little bit cloudy, so let's go back in and correct it some more. So again, not the end of the world. All right, let's work that in. Okay, so we'll take a hair dryer to this and uh, we'll come back. Okay, so I've hit it with a hair dryer. Um, and then for this area here, again, I have to go back and fix the mistake that, uh, that I made with the splashes. I'm just going to soften this out with a sponge. There you go. Kind of blend that in. Now we may want to go back and hit this with some more splashes after just to kind of restore what we removed. But that's incorporated itself into the finish nicely. And you can see here, if the light can catch it, there is starting to develop a bit of a gloss sheen, which is what we want. So let's go back and just add a little bit more to it. So again, just working in the center, like so. And again, just with a stippling motion. Just to give it a little, little something else to look at. Maybe carry it a little bit further down under here. And again, this is a great spot to practice because not people aren't going to see it so much. Just kind of building things up as you go. Now you can see in here already, hopefully the camera can pick this up, is that there is a differentiation between what I had there before and the middle where I, I just added some more of the of the mixture. So we'll just add, and again, you're just going down the middle. Just that's all you need to do. Just build this up. Nice, relaxing. And then let's go here. So you can see this here. So this has really set the palette for us to work with, right? So that was the first application. And then you gradually work your way in and just focus on see that. We're gonna just work your way down the middle here. So we'll hit that with a hairdryer again, and we'll come back. Okay, so I just hit it with a hairdryer, and I'm really liking the effect on the front here. It's starting, you can see there's a bit of a, there's a, bit of a, a gloss sheen starting to develop in the middle here, exactly what we're looking for. So we'll just hit it one more time. And just working in the middle, just a stippling action, just working in the middle. Just like that. Nice, greasy, dirty. Now this could be grease, it could be just plain water, it could have just gone into a, a puddle and all this is splashed up and wet this. It could be anything you want it to be. But the effect does look good. 
It was nice. And the nice thing about this, this is one of my favorite effects to do on a vehicle. The nice thing about this is not only is there a range of color, but there's also a range of, of, uh, of finish in terms of where you have a glossy finish towards the middle and it kind of generally fades out and flattens out as, as it gets towards the edges. I think that's really nice. If you can incorporate that type of thing into your, into your finishes for weathering, um, I think it really makes it look realistic and it helps to tell a story. You know, where this vehicle has been, what type of terrain it was in, what it's done. Maybe in some future projects we can get to doing, uh, you know, some battle damage, which is another way of telling a story for, for a vehicle. A good model should really be a story, I think. You know, should you look at it and you say, you know, it looks like that vehicle's been, been through hell and back. It's taken, you know, near misses, shells have maybe bounced up and gouged things. You know, the type of stowage that's on the vehicle, it should really... Mike Rinaldi said that, and he's absolutely right. I always tell a story. So I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe on the side here, maybe just one more application down the middle, real thin down the middle. But I think I'm pretty much happy with this. There you go. Look at that. Just, just like that. Again. Let's go back to the one that we just did. So this one could probably benefit from another two or three applications. It's the same thing, right? The same process. So you just kind of work your way in and you're just kind of building up the glossy part here. A little bit dark. Now let me get this into the light. There we go. It's a little better. Maybe as you're working your way in, you can be a little bit more generous. Try to build up the effect. Like so. But that's what you're looking for. And you can see on the front here, we've pretty much fixed this up. I may go back and just add a few more splashes here because I've had to take around the screen. But it, again, you see it's not difficult to come back from a mistake. It just takes a little patience and time. But I think that looks good. I think I'm pretty happy with that so far. So um, what I'll do is I'm just going to hit this with a little bit more of the splashes to build that area up a bit, and then I think we'll uh, I think then we'll move on to the uh, to the next stage. Okay. So I think we're finished with the staining. I've gone back and I've applied uh, a little bit more splashing here just to make up for um, some of the effects that I had to remove to clean up that uh, one blob that got on there. Um, but that's looking good. The stain on the side is good. The stain on the other side uh, is good. So nice, kind of as you work your way in, more more of a glossy finish. Maybe one more application here. I think the front is good, and maybe another application or two here, and I think we'd be done. We'll do that off camera. Um, now what I'd like to get into is uh, oils. Uh, you can use oils uh, to simulate um, mud and dust accumulation, and I think uh, out of all of the mediums, these are probably the most precise, that was the, probably the most uh, precise medium to use. Um, in that you can really paint. So let's use, so this is, um, this is uh, uh, 502 Alpine uh, light mud. So let's get some dust and let's work it around. Let's see, where do we want to go? Let's work it around this front. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but this front doohickey here, let's call it a doohickey. So what you do is I would paint this in, kind of just stipple it in, where you'd want to have the effect. And then clean your brush. And again, the same stippling effect. And really what you're just trying to do is diffuse the 
diffuse the effect. And all you're doing is you're just moving around just with a stippling action. And you can see I'm just pushing pushing this around and down. Very easy to do. So this is the most again, I think this gives you the most control in terms of where you want your color, your effect to go. And again, if you're not happy with it, you just take a brush loaded with thinner and you pull it all off. There you have it. It's as easy as that. So for example, I may have gotten some in here in this in this weld seam. I may want to remove that. So I just take a little bit more thinner. And I just pull it out. Again, it's, I think it's the most precise way to get weathering effects, mud, dirt, dust on your vehicle. Very subtle, just diffuse it. That's all you're trying to do is just diffuse it. Very easy. So let's say, let's say I find this color. Maybe that's a little bit too light. The nice thing about oils is you can mix them. So I take a little bit of the, this is what, the dark mud? Yeah, dark mud and mix it in with the light mud. And I can get something that's a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. There we go, that's about the right color, I think. Maybe lighten that up. Again, you can, with the nice thing with oils, you can really mix. Mix and match. So you get a color. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm somewhat happy with that. So let's maybe go on the other side and do the same type of thing here. Oh, I just, it's almost like, um, like the, the dot method when you're trying to create, uh, when you're trying to defeat, like create a filter. Same type of thing. Just get some of the oil paint on there. Clean the brush off. And again, same type of thing. You're just kind of pushing the oil paints around. Very easy to do. And it's almost as if you're creating another filter. So you can work within the panel line or the, the individual panels to create um, kind of like a, a, like almost like a dust filter, a localized dust filter in that panel. And it just, again, it just adds to the overall effect of the finish. So this to me is the best part 
finishing the model. I don't mind doing the construction. Uh, and I don't mind doing the painting. The camouflage or the base color, the modulation. But to me, this is the best part right here. That's where you can start to bring little areas of your vehicle to life. And just diffuse it, just to, again, you're just kind of pushing the, pushing the paint around. You might want to get some clean thinner in there. And you don't need a lot, because you're working with very small amounts of paint here. You can see, oh, you're just kind of diffusing the finish. Let go. There's a weld seam here where I've gotten some. I just want to go and clean that up just to create that you know, demarcation. Very easy to do. And again, these, these oils will stay active for a little while. So again, if I wanted to go back in here, I'll just make sure that oil that cleaned out and maybe clean this out too. Just to give it that. But do you see how easy it is? Just little tiny stippling motions with the brush. Just to kind of diffuse the, the effect and just get it to where you want it to be. Very subtle. There you go. It's as easy as that. So I would look at doing this at certain strategic areas around the vehicle, around the backs here, where, where dust would come up, where crew members would get up and off the vehicle. The turret, I think we'll do uh, for uh, we'll do another time, but it would be the same type of thing. You will use a mixture of pigments and oils just to give some. Uh, some life in terms of uh, you know just getting some dirt and dust on this thing because otherwise if you put this on the vehicle and you don't do anything with it it just doesn't you know everything else has dust and dirt on it but your turret doesn't it, you know to me that doesn't quite look right so in the effort of uh, consistency of the vehicle in terms of telling the story you know let's get some dirt um, let's get some pigments let's get some oils on this thing uh, maybe do a little bit more work, some streaking in there. So we'll do another. Uh, we'll do another episode dedicated to the uh, to the turret, uh, and you'll see it's just as easy as doing uh, the rest of the vehicle. But you're just kind of uh, the higher up you go in the vehicle, um, the less uh, the less dust and dirt and mud that you, you would have on it. But you do want to take into account where the uh, where the crew would clamber up on the vehicle, and again you would have explosions and whatnot that would throw. Um, dirt and dust and accumulations on top of the vehicle so you want to take that into effect so but as you can see very very easy to do and and if you make a mistake not the end of the world you can go back and fix it easy enough so so thanks uh, uh, thanks for sitting in with me on this and uh, I look forward to the uh, to the next episode thank you very much